section 4.1 is called patterns and uh, that's what we're going to be doing in this chapter. We're going to be looking for patterns. We're going to be using inductive reasoning and what inductive reasoning is is when you make a conclusion by looking for patterns. Uh, it's very important to note that with inductive reasoning the conclusion you make it may be true or it may not be true. So let me give you an example. Let's say that Timmy comes late for my class on Monday and then Timmy comes late for my class on Tuesday and Timmy comes late for my class on Wednesday and Thursday. Now using inductive reasoning I could look at the pattern that Timmy's been late every single day this week and I could come to the conclusion I think Timmy's going to be late tomorrow on Friday. Now does that mean for sure that's going to be true? No, it may or may not be. But I think you'd agree with me that what I've said that he's going to be late it's based on an educated guess, right? There's a pretty good reason for me to guess that but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily true. Um, okay, so we're going to practice a little bit here. We're going to look at these patterns and we're going to guess what the next, we're going to make an educated guess as to what the next answer will be. So if you take a look here, it says that 1 times 1 is 1. I bet you knew that. And 11 times 11 is 121. You probably knew that too, but you probably didn't know this. 111 times 111 is 12,321. And now they want you to say what's 1,111 times 1,111 and you can't use a calculator. Well, if you look at these answers, I bet you see the pattern. And I'm betting that you're going to take the guess that the answer is 1, 2, 3, just like it was here, but it's going to go 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, is that true? Well, maybe, but maybe not. Maybe this pattern only works for the first three. Of course, in this case, we could confirm it. We could use one of these guys. And so let's try it. 1, 1, 1, 1 times 1, 1, 1, 1 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, it worked. And with that in mind, you can probably get the next one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, you probably feel pretty confident about that, but are you 100% confident? Would you stake your life on it? I wouldn't. It's a great educated guess. I think it's true, but I wouldn't stake my life on it because we don't know necessarily that it's true. If you want, you could check again using the calculator. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 times 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And yes, you do get that answer. But what I'm saying is before you use the calculator, we didn't actually know that 100%. Okay, let's take a look at this one. 1 cubed is 1, which is just the same as 1. That's weird. 2 cubed is 8, which is the same as 3 plus 5. Okay, 3 cubed is 27, which is the same as 7 plus 9 plus 11. So you've probably picked up on this, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So those are odd numbers. And you can see there's one odd number here, two odd numbers here, and three odd numbers here. So how many odd numbers are there going to be in 4 cubed? There's going to be 4, right? 3 cubed, whatever the base is, 3, you add 3 of them, 2, you add 2 of them. So we're going to add 4 odd numbers. Which ones we're going to add? Well, we want 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, so we must add 13 plus 15 plus 17 plus 19. Let's try that. 13 plus 17 is 30, plus the 15 is 45. If I added 20, it'd be 65, but I only added 19, which is one less than that, so it'd be 64. Anyway, if you're not, not following what I'm saying, you can try it in the calculator. Yeah, it does. It equals 64. How many numbers do we have to add? 5 cubed. You're going to have to add 5 of them. What are the numbers? 21 plus 23 plus 25 plus 27 plus 29. And if you add the first one and the last one, 21 and tw 29, you get 50. If you add the second one and this one, you get 50 again. So 50 and 50 is 100 plus the 25 is 125. Good, so that worked too. Now let's say that this, I've given you what it equals every time. This, what if I wanted to know what 6 cubed does? Well, you could use a calculator, but you could also use this pattern. How many odd numbers are you going to have to add? Six of them. Which ones are you going to add? Well, we got up to 29 here, so we must add 31 plus 33 plus 35 plus 37 plus 39 plus 41. Uh, if you add these two here, you get 80. If you add this and this, you get 70. And if you add this and this, you get 66. 80 and 70 is 150, and 150 and 66 is 216. And if you're not sure, you could use a calculator, and it's true. 6 cubed is 216. Okay? 
Um, so using patterns to find answers. What will be the hundredth shape in the following pattern? So this is the first shape in the pattern. This is the second, this is the third, and this is the fourth. What will the fifth shape be? Well, we'll be back to this again, right? We'll have another one of these arrows like this. But I'll just put it here. This will be the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. This will be the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, the twelfth. Should I keep going all the way up to 100? No, I don't want to do that. Um, if you look, one of these sets of numbers, they all have something in common. And it's this one, this last one. What's true about all these numbers? They're all multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, so the next one would be 16, 20, 24. So, is 100, 100 a multiple of 4? Does 4 go into 100 evenly? Yeah, it does. It goes in 25 times. So this is the one. The 25th row will have 100 right here. Okay? All right. Similar question here. What's the 40th shape in this pattern? So here's the first shape, the second shape, the third shape, the fourth shape, the fifth shape, the sh sixth shape, and the seventh shape, the eighth shape, the ninth shape. Which ones is there commonality or p pattern here? It's always going to be the, the last one, um, the number of shapes there are, and you can see the pattern here. Three goes into them. These are all multiples of three. So does three go into 40? No, it doesn't. I mean, it does. Three goes into 40, but not evenly. You get 13 with the remainder of one. So in other words, if you went along, you'd have the 13th row would have, what, 39 here, right? You'd have 37, 38, and 39. That'd be the 13th row. And you'd have one more shape. So that'd be the 40th shape right here. This is it right there. Okay, I'm going a little bit quick here. And if you're not following exactly how I'm doing it, that's fine. There's more than one way to solve these as well. So, you know, it's not so important to me that you're understanding exactly how I'm solving them. What's more important to me that you understand the sort of thinking that goes into solving these, and you're going to have to try to solve these sort of things on your own. Find the next two numbers in the following patterns. Also, find the hundredth number for the first two patterns. So just for the first two, you also have to find the hundredth. Okay, so let's take a look at these numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16. Usually what people look at is, well, what would you add to 1 to get 4? You had 3, and then you had 5, and then you had 7. Oh, so you could, if you add 3, and then you add 5, and then you add 7, how much would you add here? You'd add 9, which gives you 25. And then you add 11, and you get 36. That's great. But now we need the hundredth number. Boy, that sounds hard. But take a look at those numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. You know those numbers. They're the perfect squares. This is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared. So if we want the hundredth number, it's going to be 100 squared, which is... 10,000. That's the number. Okay, let's try this one. Again, does it go up by some amount? It goes up by 6, and it goes up by 6 again. So let's assume that it goes up by 6 again, you get 30, and you go up by 6 again, you get 36. By the way, as I said, this is an educated guess. Maybe this isn't the actual pattern. Maybe it goes up by 6 and up by 6, and then it goes up by 12 and up by 12. You know, I don't know who designed this pattern. But I think it's safe to assume, it's an educated guess, that it keeps going up by 6 by 6 by 6. That's inductive reasoning. We don't know for sure. But let's assume this is correct. Now we have to get the 100th. So here's a method that will often work for this. Remember we said that this went up by 6. I don't know why I'm redrawing it. I just wrote this. And this went up by 6. What you can do is make a little table, and we'll call it the term number in the first column, and the actual value, or the actual number in the second one. So the first term, right, the first number is 12. The second number is 18, and the third number is 24. I guess we can keep going. Fourth is 30, and fifth is 36. Now, what you've seen is that it goes up by 6, goes up by 6, goes up by 6, goes up by 6. If you have this common addition, you're repeatedly adding a certain amount. What's another way of saying repeatedly add in, mul in math? If you're repeatedly adding, you're multiplying. So you take that number, the 6, and you multiply it by the term number. Let's call it n. So 6n. Now, if I multiply, this is the first number, right? If I multiply this by 6, 6 times 1 is 6, but I wanted 12. So what would I have to do to the 6? Well, I could multiply it by 2, or I could add 6. So which one of those will work? Let's try the second one. If I do 6 times 2, I get 12. And now I have to get up to 18, though. Multiplying by 2 will get me to 24. That's too big. But adding 6 seems to work. 
Are you following what I'm saying? I'll say it again. Once I figured out that it's adding 6, repeatedly adding 6, I know part of the equation is going to be 6n. So then I try. 6 times 1 is 6, but I have to add 6 more to get 12. 6 times 2 is 12, but I have to add 6 more to get 18. 6 times 3 is 18, I have to add 6 more. This is my formula. If I want to know the certain value, I just take whatever term number it is, multiply by 6, and add 6. I want to get term number 100, right? So what I'm going to do is put 100 in here. I get 6 times 100 plus 6. That's 600 plus 6 is 606 is my number. Okay, here's a hard one. 4, 2, 8, 4, 10, 5, 11. I think you could stare at those a long time and you might not get what the pattern is. I invite you to pause the video and see if you can get it. Give yourself two minutes. See if you can solve it in two minutes. Here's a hint if you want a hint. Look at these numbers, then look at those numbers, then look at those numbers. Okay, what you'll probably notice is to go from here to here you divide by 2, and to go from here to here you divide by 2, and to go from here to here you divide by 2. But how about to go from here to here? You could multiply by 4, but that certainly doesn't happen here, not multiplying by 4. What's another way you go from 2 to 8? You could add 6, and that's exactly what you did here, you added 6. So you have this repetition of dividing by 2 and adding 6, dividing by 2 and adding 6, dividing by 2 and adding 6 gets me up there. Divide by 2, 11 divided by 2 is 5.5, .5, a decimal. That's okay. Now we add 6, 5 plus 5 plus 6 is 11.5. There's my two numbers. Thank goodness I didn't ask for the hundredth one on that one. That'd be a good challenge problem. Someone figure that out and let me know. Okay, next one. 1, 1, 2, 6, 24. Hmm. Well, I could add 0 here, and add 1 here, and add 4 here, and add 18 here. But I'm not sure if that's going to work. What else could you do to go from 1 to 1? You could divide by 1, but then 1 divided by what equals 2? Divided by half. This doesn't sound too encouraging. What else could you do if you go from 1 to 1? You could multiply by 1. How about to go from 1 to 2? Multiply by 2. Go from 2 to 6. Multiply by 3. Oh, I think we figured it out. Go to 6, 6 24. Add, multiply by 4. This is terrible writing. So to go from 24 to the next one, we have to add, multiply by 5. 24 times 5 is 120. To get the next one, multiply by 6 is 720. There's our numbers. Okay, these numbers are wang doodles. I'm just making this all up, right? Those are wang doodles. But these numbers here are not wang doodles. So what's the difference? What makes a number a wang doodle? You got even numbers and you also have odd numbers, so it's nothing to do with that. You see what it is? I'll give you a hint. 2 is the only even wang doodle. Every other no even number is not a wang doodle. You know why? Because these numbers, these wang doodles, they're all prime. Now, again, this is inductive reasoning. Maybe that's not the reason. Maybe whoever made up wang doodles, because it's just a made up thing, maybe it's actually um, his favorite numbers. Or maybe it's the his marks in the first five math quizzes he ever wrote in his life, right? Who knows? But I think it's safe to assume, it's a good educated guess, that these are all prime and these ones are not prime or composite. So we want to know which ones are wang doodles. In other words, which ones are prime? Is this prime? No, you could divide by 2. Is this prime? Yep, you can only divide by 1 and 29. Is that prime? No, I could divide by 5 or 7. Is this prime? Yep, only 1 and 47. Is that prime? Oh, that's a hard one. 83? I don't think anything goes into it except 1 and 83. And this one? Definitely not prime. How do you know? Because it's even. You could divide it by 2. So here's your wang doodles. Okay? Again, it's not so much these questions that I want you to focus on. It's not like you have to memorize all these types of questions. I just want you to get this sense that we're looking for patterns and finding prediction, making predictions for what the next numbers are, what the solutions are. But it's very important to realize that when you use inductive reasoning, your um, reasoning could actually be incorrect. The answer you get might not be true. Brick, baby. That's what I'm gonna throw upside your head. I said a brick, baby. That's what I'm gonna throw upside your head. Yeah, you got me so worried. Got me talking out.